गाइस वेलकम टू इनिशियट साइंस वेर साइंस मीट्स यू इन टूडेज वीडियो लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट इज जीएसएम GSM is currently the most widely used network technology in internet of things applications for its simplicity affordability and accessibility but that's likely to change over the next few years when the global system for mobile communication was first introduced in Europe in 1991 these 2G networks created faster more secure wireless connections for the first time voice connections became encoded into digital signals before being transmitted through the network GSM reigned for years as the world's most widely used standard for mobile communications but today 2G network are significantly slower than other cellular networks and in several countries 2G networks are being switched off MNOs mobile network operators are competing to balance the fastest speeds with the best coverage with decades of built up infrastructure gsm based networks can offer good coverage but they can't compete with the speed versatility and security of 3g 4g and 5g networks additionally gsm standards were designed with cell phones in mind not iot today billions of other devices like parking meters industrial equipment car entertainment systems and system securities rely on cellular networks and use them in different ways than phones do As a result, specialized networks have emerged to address the modern landscape of cellular connectivity. So, are GSM standards still important for cellular connectivity today? Are they relevant to IoT applications? Before we get into that, let's look at how GSM network works. What exactly is GSM? GSM, Global System for Mobile Communication, is a standard developed by the European Telecommunications Standards Institute. ETSI to describe the protocols for second generation 2G digital cellular networks used by mobile devices such as mobile phones and tablets it was first deployed in finland in december 1991 by the mid 2010 it became a global standard for mobile communications achieving over 90% market share and operating in over 193 countries and territories It is a digital mobile network that is widely used by mobile phone users in Europe and other parts of the world. GSM uses a variation of time division multiple access TDMA and is the most widely used of the three digital wireless telephony technologies. TDMA, GSM and code division multiple access CDMA. GSM digitizes and compresses data then sends it down to a channel with other two streams of user data. each in its own time slot it operates at either the 900 megahertz network structure or composition of the network the gsm network has four separate parts that work together to function as a whole the mobile device itself the base station subsystem bss the network switching subsystem nss and the operation and support subsystem oss The mobile device connects to the network via hardware the subscriber identity module sim card provides the network with identifying information about the mobile user the network is structured into several discrete sections base station subsystem the base stations and the controllers are present network and switching subsystem the part of the network most similar to a fixed network sometimes just called the core network gprs core network the optional part which allows packet based internet connections operations support subsystem OSS it gives network maintenance base stations the BSS handles traffic between the cell phone and NSS it consists of two main components the base transceiver station BTS and the base station controller BSC the BTS contains the equipment that communicates with the mobile phones largely the radio transmitter receivers and antennas while the BSC is the intelligence behind it the BSC communicates with and controls a group of base transceiver stations the nss portion of the gsm network architecture often called the core network tracks the location of callers to enable the delivery of cellular services mobile carriers own the nss the nss has a variety of parts including mobile switching center and home location register these components perform different functions such as routing calls and short message services that is sms and authenticating and storing caller account information via sim cards 
GSM utilizes a cellular network, meaning that cell phones connect to it by searching for cells in the immediate vicinity. There are different cell sizes in a GSM network, such as my micro, micro, pico, femto and so on. The coverage area of each cell varies according to the implementation environment. Macro cells can be regarded as cells where the base station antenna is installed on a mast or on a building above average rooftop level. Micro cells are cells whose antenna height is under average rooftop level. They are typically deployed in urban areas. Pico cells are small cells whose coverage diameter is a few dozen meters. They are mainly used indoors. GSM carrier frequencies. GSM networks operate in a number of different carrier frequency ranges, separated into GSM frequency ranges for 2G and UMTS frequency bands for 3G, with most 2G GSM networks operating in the 900 MHz. Where these bands were already allocated, the 850 MHz and the 1900 MHz bands were used instead, for example in Canada and the United States. In rare cases, the 400 and 450 MHz frequency bands are assigned in some countries because they were previously used for the first generation systems. SIM Subscriber Identity Module One of the key features of GSM is the Subscriber Identity Module, commonly known as a SIM card. The SIM is a detachable smart card containing the user's subscription information and phone book. This allows the user to retain their information after switching handsets. Alternatively, the user can change operators while retaining the handset simply by changing the SIM. Phone locking. Sometimes mobile network operators restrict handsets that they sell for exclusive use in their own network. This is called SIM locking and is implemented by a software feature of the phone. A subscriber may usually contact the provider to remove the lock for a fee, utilize private services to remove the lock or use software and websites to unlock the handset themselves. It is possible to hack past a phone lock by a network operator. Security Although GSM was designed as a secure wireless system, it can still experience attacks. GSM used authentication measures such as challenge response authentication, which prompts a user to provide a valid answer to a question and a pre-shared key that is in the form of a password or passphrase. There are a few cryptographic security algorithms that GSM employs including stream ciphers that encrypt plain text digits. GSM or CDMA, which is more popular between GSM and CDMA, GSM and by extension its descendants 5G, New Radio, UMTS and LTE is more popular. GSM based technologies are deployed in practically every country in the world. CDMA by contrast is currently used in less than 10 countries. Furthermore, carriers will shut down almost all those CDMA networks in the next five years. What are some limitations of GSM? Though GSM is the preferred technology for today's telecommunication ecosystem, it isn't without its shortcomings. The following are some disadvantages of GSM. 1. Electronic interference. Because GSM uses a pulse transmission technology, it is known to interfere with electronics like hearing aids. This electromagnetic interference is why certain places like airports, gas stations and hospitals require mobile phones to be turned off. 2. Bandwidth lag. When using GSM technologies, multiple users access the same bandwidth, sometimes resulting in a considerable latency as more users join the network. 3. Limited rate of data transfer. GSM offers a somewhat limited data transfer rate. To achieve higher data rates, a user must switch to a device with more advanced forms of GSM. 4. Repeaters. GSM technologies require carriers to install repeaters to increase coverage. Is GSM still useful? GSM networks are now three decades old and there are three generations of cellular networks with far higher data transfer rates, more secure connections and advanced networking capabilities. Over the years, telecommunications organizations have implemented upgrades to get more mileage out of GSM-based networks, but in several countries, 2G is coming to an end. This doesn't have much impact on consumers as phones usually support multiple technologies. 
but GSM has been one of the most popular connectivity choices in cellular IoT. Modern IoT manufacturers need to evaluate whether 2G connectivity is still a viable option for their application in the region where they want to deploy. GSM played a foundational role in the modern cellular communications and while some operators are transitioning to newer networks, this technology is still immensely popular for its global availability and extremely low cost connectivity. As operators expand their infrastructure for affordable alternatives like LTE, M, 2G will become less relevant but until then it's still an alternative solution for many cellular IoT applications. subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get instant updates of the video that